Thanks for joining us on the news at 10 tonight. Conflicted death toll trailed the suicide bombing. Nemo says that the crowd control remains a problem in rescue operations. For well, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, accuses President Muhammad Buhari of inefficiency in his first month in office. And the presidency says it is clearing the mess left behind by the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan. And marches in the Tunisian town of Sousse condemns the killing of 38 people, mostly tourists, by a militant on a nearby beach. We'll begin tonight from Nigeria's troubled northeast region, where conflict's death toll continues to trail a suicide bomb incident near a hospital in Bolay area of Meduguri, the capital of Borno State in Nigeria's north. Suicide bombers who attempted to gain entry into the government-run hospital blew themselves up while detonating the explosive device wired round their body. Eyewitness accounts say that three people were also killed while 15 others were injured. However, the Northeast Coordinator of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mr. Mohammed Kanar, says that five people died in the incident. Mr. Kanar adds that one issue that continues to affect rescue efforts after terrorist attacks is crowd control. That uh, probably the bomber wanted to go into the hospital. But nevertheless, uh, the, he exploded outside the hospital at the uh, crowded place, and about uh, five people are dead and then ten wounded. No, normally, when an uh, incident like this happens, the governor or top government official will pay a visit to the hospital or to where. The victims are, are in order to assess the, uh, the assistance they need to be given. But definitely, definitely, this is a confirmed uh, uh, information from all the rapid response units, which involve Red Cross, military, police, NEMA, SEMA, and other uh, RCRC and other important organizations. So before the military arrives and other important organizations arrive, then you see that the crowd will take over the area. You know, normally these incidents happen in the market or market places or where there is a large number of people. So before you realize uh, what you are doing, the crowd will take over the area. And by the time people arrive, you know, this happened in Gamburi area. You know, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, people who are even searching the bodies of, uh, of, 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 of a dead person. So the, the military has to chase people away, and this will cause, you know, another problem. You know, you don't have to be chasing people like uh, you are chasing animals. So we are having problem of that. We want people to know if your people are not dedicated on how to keep assistance. It's always the problem and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's a critical period, it's a critical cover to save life. In fact, even handling, most handling of the injured person will be to be safe. Meanwhile, children of school age in Borno State appear to be paying the price for the insurgency that has troubled the state for the past six years now. With 20 local councils of the state, the state sacked by insurgents, fleeing residents now find temporary shelter in government-owned schools in the capital city. The result is thousands of idle children languishing at home with their future hanging in the balance. In its formative stage, Boko Haram's ideology preached against Western education. The insurgents targeted schools in Meduguri for attacks to drive home their point and the state government was forced to rebuild them and get students back to school. Students from local government areas sacked by Boko Haram and areas considered vulnerable were enrolled in public schools in Meduguri to pursue their dreams, even in the midst of threats from the insurgents. But the students have been forced to vacate their schools to make room for the internally displaced persons overwhelming the capital city. Because of the IDPs, there are so many. Formerly, there were about 18,000 in the school. 
seven houses, 37 classrooms now. You see, you see them behind even my office. Even our examination, one of the examination hall, our Dan Hall A, what of them? We are occupying all this. And so there's no way we continue with the uh, classes with the students. One year on, students of these schools are holding on to the hope that their schools will be reopened. Some of them have embraced vocations to keep busy. The time Boko Haram attack Barak, then at that time, students are running away from the school. Then at that time, they close it. Till now, they did not open it. Private schools are the only options for parents who can afford the usually higher tuition. It is, however, not business as usual for the proprietors, as learning now takes place under strict security conditions where everyone is a suspect. Most of the children now are facing a lot of psychological trauma as a result of uh, the insurgency. It is not easy to live in warlike situations. Elite class, most of them we drew to Abuja, but we were able to fill up quite a big number with those coming from the local government. So those around, I can say, are already adopting to the situation. The state government is worried about the social ills the idle school children are exposed to every day. Governor Kachim Shatima is passionate in his appeal for help. For the past one year, all our schools have been closed down. Unless we want to produce a generation of new Boko Haram, we need to reopen our schools, we need to equip our schools, our clinics, <coughs> our hospitals. Although primary schools are not housing the displaced, school session is on in only areas considered safe, like the old GRA primary school. In the meantime, the Federal Polytechnic movie Adama State has was closed, which was closed in October 2014 in the wake of the Boko Haram invasion of the town, has reopened for academic work. The Director of Information and Protocol of the institution, Mr. Philip Ndalabu, says that the major repair work of structures damaged by the insurgents have been concluded. Elsewhere, the College of Health Technology, MUBI, which was also closed during the insurgency, reopened three months ago. But Adamal State University, located in the town, is yet to resume. Although workers of the university have resumed, repair work on damaged infrastructure is still on. The insurgents had damaged basic infrastructure in the university. Well, the body of the former Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, Futa, in Ondo State, Professor Albert Ilemobadi, who was reported to have been kidnapped, was found in his house in Ijapo, in Akure, the Ondo State capital, this morning. Professor Ilemobadi's family are alleging that his driver and gate man killed the former university don in his house and made away with his Toyota Jeep vehicle. According to them, the police intercepted the car at Oven State, which led to the arrest of the suspects and eventually discovered the professor's dead body at the store in his house. The decomposed body of the late professor has been deposited at, the undisclosed, at an undisclosed mortuary in the state capital. The public relations officer in Ondo State Police Command, Wale Ogodo, told our correspondents that the command will brief the press as soon as they get enough relevant information about it. And over now to River State in Nigeria's south-south region where the state where the state police command has promised to dislodge criminals from their hideouts and sustain its onslaught on violent criminals and the recovery of illegal firearms. Well, according to the security operatives, an operation on a waterfront in Abuloma in Port Hackett and other hideouts in River State has resulted in numerous arrests of suspected culprits, robbers as well as kidnappers and other violent criminals, as well as the recovery of over 200 arms and ammunition at a well's stolen, as well as stolen cars and assorted household items. <laughs> The River State Police Command in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, 
assorted firearms are paraded side by side with these people who the police claim are suspected cultists, robbers and criminals. According to the command, the nefarious activities of these suspects came to an end when the police stormed their various hideouts in the state. We have met numerous arrests across the state of suspected kidnappers, armed robbers and cultists. And most of them they have been charged in court uh, because of their case. Uh, the investigation of their case has been concluded and they are found to be wanting. So the ones that you see here behind us, they are arrested in connection with cultism and Rumo Ekini. Although we arrested about 66 of them, but the remaining were screened because they were found not wanting. And uh, in the issue of armed robbery, the issue of armed robbery is coming down based on the statistics we have here in this, uh, in this River State Command. One of those on parade, however, says that he unwittingly got himself associated with the suspected criminals, while another vehemently denies being involved in any form of criminality. I'm a civil engineer. I just graduated from the University of Port Harcourt. I read civil engineering. So I'm the project manager of the CSO of Rumekini. His name is Ananta. So on Sunday, very early in the morning, I heard some banging on the door. So, in fact, in a, to just cut a, long, to cut a long story short, they arrested us and brought us to this place. They said we are into kidnapping. I've not been involved in any kind of kidnapping activity. I'm not a robber. I, I, I didn't know that the boys that are calling me on phone that they are robbers, they, they called me to come and check their, to come and start motor for them. So when I was there, when I was there checking the motor, police now arrest me. While reports of illegal firearms in the hands of criminals on the heels of the conclusion of the elections has continued to be a source of worry for residents. There is, however, a need for the police to ensure that innocent people are not arrested alongside genuine criminals. Emmanuel Iri, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, accuses President Muhammad Buhari of inefficiency in the first month in office as the presidency says it is cleaning up the mess left behind by the administration of former president. Good luck, Jonathan. Stay with us. <laughs>